Hi guys, my name is Ashley Ethington Ball and I'm with the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Anaheim Cypress and I am here to lead the PTA paint night tonight. I am so excited to get started with you guys. Um, I just love to always start with what are we painting and what do we need. So we are painting a winter tree, very Bob Ross-esque kind of scene and we would need our paint that's been provided our paintbrush, our canvas. Hopefully you guys all expected that. I usually like to grab quite a bit of paper towel to put under just to protect my table. I have a plate here available so I can mix some colors and I also have a small cup of water. But that would be it and then we'll get started. All right, to begin our winter tree, we are going to use our blue at the top portion of our painting and we're gonna use white towards the bottom of our painting. We are creating that background of a blue sky and eventually we're gonna blend with the white until it's all one kind of blended section. And that'll create that nice, almost cloudy atmosphere to our snowy day. But I'll go ahead and get started with you guys. All right, for this next section, we are actually adding our tree onto our nice snowy background. There should be white at the bottom half, light blue in the middle, dark blue at the top. And now that we're moving on, I clean my brush and we're moving to the black. Um, for this portion, again, I'm gonna aim my camera more at the canvas. So you can see where I'm starting my tree and how I'm doing the movements for just how the tree is moving up through our background. All right, let's go. So although in the past I've done more of a time lapse, you actually want to start your tree right where the white is just starting to blend with the blue. And you're going to kind of start a kind of trunk shape right here. Again, if you want to get your shape first and then start filling in, that is totally fine. I'm going to add lots of black though because you want it mostly opaque for the trunk shape. And then I'm gonna extend up and have like maybe one of my first branches. Then I'll continue up in this direction. I like to kind of get a nice pointed shape at the end. So you wanna go for less and less paint as you go. But don't feel afraid to get nice thick tree branches going in the beginning because we are actually going to thin them out and add more different options you'll see as you go. So for this low branch, I'm going to start filling him out a lot more as well. So he's going to get nice and long. And again, I'm letting it kind of taper as it goes, usually. So we'll have a nice kind of way of starting. If you start to feel like your tree should be thicker, that's okay. Go ahead and thicken up your tree. And this is your tree, and it grows differently than my tree. So again, I'm going to keep winding my tree up into the sky. And I'll start again adding in lots of branches, lots of branches growing from my tree. And that's okay. Even layer some that are going behind others or in front of. This is all kind of the background of how your wintry tree is going to look in the snow. So don't feel too nervous. I think I might actually pause here because I'm going to think about if I want to start adding in some smaller branches and how those will look. Okay, so here's the kind of base of my tree. All right, now that I've gotten the base, I actually want to start feathering with like really delicate small branches. And so that's where I'm going to start kind of doing almost 
very little paint at this point. And extending out. If my tree goes off the page, that's okay. He's got one branch that goes off the page. But I don't ever want to have a nice thick line at the top. I want to just have really delicate, small things. So if you have smaller brushes at home, this might be an opportunity to maybe work a little bit smaller. Or don't be afraid to almost dab it because it's going to be nice and thin and you don't want it too, too thick. I like what I did right there where I almost like kind of flicked the brush a direction. And I will say it definitely helps when you have less paint because you don't need it too dark. Actually, my tree got a little short in the middle. I like to lengthen that up a little more. It's going to make this branch nice and tall. And then kind of from there, scraggle it out. And don't be afraid to make, you know, branches that aren't smooth because this is nature. And they aren't smooth. So this is again an artistic messy process where it doesn't have to be perfect and that's where I love if you guys have ever seen Bob Ross videos he talks all the time about how nature is not perfectly even it's not perfectly symmetrical so don't worry about that you feel like adding a little more black just to make something longer go ahead and do it and eventually again there are no art emergencies you can always fix your tree to add more or less all right I think those are the details I wanted all right as you can see we're starting to get a tree shaping up on our background but our next section is actually going to be with our white and our purple I'm gonna use my plate for the first time. I'm going to be creating the snow that's on our tree, but this snow is hitting, you know, some warmth because it's touching a dark brown tree. So you're gonna be mixing just the tiniest hint of purple in with your white in order to achieve that color. And then I'll kind of show you the smudging technique that I'm doing. It's nice and light. So make sure you got a little bit of paint and it's a nice and light movement. All right. All right, so I'm gonna be again testing out just how I want the layers of the snow to hit the tree. Just be really careful because if your black is too wet in a section, it'll actually blend and make gray. So clean your brush if that happens. I'm actually gonna to start towards the top where I think the paint is just a little thinner and even start getting some fresh white paint to kind of dab in sections and get started nice and thick where I want it to be. And remember, again, this is a nice snowy tree. So eventually I'm gonna thin this out, but I also noticed I got a lot of blackish thick paint towards the root of my tree. So I'm gonna really stay away from there in case I accidentally start mixing some gray. So once I have that, I'm gonna dab my paintbrush in the purple just a tad, mix it on my plate. So you can see it's starting to get almost pastel and that's great that's the color we want and then i'll start really thinning out the snow on the tree and you'll see it kind of creates a dabbing technique eventually we may want to go in there with a lot more white and that's okay so really think about where you want the highlights of your tree to be and where you think it'll be a little darker Either way will work. And again, if you feel like, okay, my brush is no longer the color I want, it's turning gray, that's a good opportunity to clean your brush 
and start adding fresh paint. And go ahead and go nice and high. The plants will go up and above the edges of the branches because again, these are growing off the branches. So really layer it out and around where your tree branches are. Add in more of that purple. And it's just a way to again, kind of pretty it up. Make it a little more springtime. Hint of springtime in this winter scene. And if you think, okay, that's too much, that's where you'd again just kind of start dabbing in more of the white or something else. I'm really starting to layer in my purple a little more just because I liked it. Once I think I got enough purple, I'll start really going back in there with the white. And I'm sure again, everyone's winter tree is going to look a little different. If you think that your tree is looking a little too thick with the white, start transferring that white paint to other sections and give it a life in the new area. But again, I'm leaving some sections a little thick because I want some highlights to my tree. All right, there we go. For this next section, I actually wanted to switch gears to give my paint time to dry. I'm gonna start kind of dabbing in some really interesting like little bushes that are kind of hanging out on the snow line and you can make them big or you can make them small, however you'd like. I'm gonna do a little one over here as well. And I feel like I accidentally got quite a bit of paint there. So we're gonna go ahead and you can see me like literally scrape the paint off, kind of scrape the paint off these bushes as well. Push in the texture that you want, but make sure that you're not, sorry, I had to pause for a second. Again, I, like you guys, I live somewhere with pets and sorts of friends in our house. So going ahead and continuing to kind of de-paintify, make sure it's not too thick and these bushes look a little more natural. I'm gonna make him a little taller since I have a lot of extra paint. Again. Thin, as light as possible. There we go. I think I like that bush a lot better. All right, and now that we kind of firmly established a ground line, we're actually gonna add in a little fence in the background, just to have again another cute grounding detail. I'm gonna paint it in front of my bush, but you can paint it behind, or however you like make it kind of chubby and maybe do one post a little crooked it's so not all not all fences are nice and straight and then for this last part I wanted to connect them so I'm gonna do it nice and So then I have my kind of post goes along the fence and I have that one. Now it's looking a little dark, so we're gonna actually go in for our last step with more of our white. So for our last part of our tree, I really gave a little extra time um, to just let my paint dry a little more. And like I said, I really just wanna add a snowy dusting on top of everything else. So I'll be using a nice clean and very dry brush with white to dab on that last layer of white that will hopefully not blend in with any other color. 
and then at the very end we'll even flick on some fun snow so that'll be our messiest step make sure you're in an area that's nice and covered with paper towel all right so like i said i'm really ready to just start dabbing in more and more snow so looking for an area that just needs to be really brightened up i'm going to go in with more white especially again if it turned into a more darker color I'm gonna layer it on top nice and bright and it just will help really accent an area that might have gotten a little too dark by accident but we can fix that by adding in like these nice highlights and we really want to again give it that textured look so part of the name of the game might be patience Feel free to just kind of hang out as a family, get a snack before coming back to it if that's the case. As you can see, it's really brightening up my tree, giving it some areas that you can see come into the front a lot better than maybe some of the previous times when we looked at it and it started to look a little gray and muddy. But I didn't want to make sure we didn't forget the foreground. So these bushes got coated in snow too, right? So we need to dust the top of our bushes in snow. Make sure we get enough white for those. So they're nice and snow dusted as well. And I'll give it that nice depth that we need. And I'm doing my bush over here. Getting a little bit over there. If you want, you can dust some on even your fence. Sometimes if you want to highlight, you can highlight even like the tree branch a little bit of where maybe it goes in the front. So that's up to you how you want to highlight within your tree. But really, I just wanted to again make it nice and bright. So I'm going to come in with even more on this one because he needed a little brightness. Same with over here. Keep it nice and bright. If there are any extra spots that I still wanted to add more white to, I could. But I want to make it a nice, happy tree, happy, just like <laughs> Bob Ross would say, a happy scene in the snow. Um, I could even shade a little along the line here to kind of give it that horizon. If I was feeling like the horizon wasn't clean enough. So there we go, that's gonna kind of give me a clean horizon line. But I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush one more time because I'm gonna again do the flicking of the snow. So I'll show you that as well. Your brush should again be very, very dry now. Very, very dry. And then if you get your white all along the tip, you're gonna actually be utilizing kind of this motion with your finger to try to flick some paint but I'll again show you the final results.